and welcome back to the show. Already today on the show, we told you that we'll be having a political aspirant here. He's actually the candidate of the Action Democratic Party, and he's going for all the position to represent the constituency of Sri Lanka too at the Federal House of Representatives. I'm talking about no other person but Mr. Actually Barrister Sheikh Clement, because he's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. He's a lawyer. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, actually, how are you today? How's your day? You look great, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. See you sitting into your Nigerian self. <laughs> okay, He's so... very comfortable. Very comfortable. Yeah. Like, I can see that. <laughs> Who is Shay Clement? Uh, Shay Clement is a Surya boy, um, uh, a Lagosian, uh, born on the island, uh, an extract of uh, Brazilian Quarter. Uh, a barrister, a call to the Nigerian bar many, many years ago. I won't tell you how long. <laughs> and then called to qualified as a solicitor as well in the in the UK. Mm. So I have a, a practice in the UK and I have a practice here in Nigeria. Okay, so is it not scary to, you know, people who are in the constituency where you want to represent that all... Oh, we heard he's based in the UK. He's a, he's a lawyer and he's solicitor in the UK. And we know, yes, he studied law here, but he's based in the UK, so why should we vote for him? <laughs> Is he truly really going to be representing us here in Sri Lanka when he's based in the UK? I, I was based in the UK, but I, I do have business here in, in Nigeria, okay. so it's not a case of me coming back um, after many years. Uh, but where you're based is really not the issue, is what you're prepared to do and how far you're prepared to work for your community, and I'm prepared to do that. Um, it's also an advantage that one has been able to see what they're exposed to other um, communities and other environment, and one can bring some of those things back. Um, not everything's going to work, but that, that broader perspective is very, very useful. Mm, okay, so why did you choose to run? Because I've got something to contribute, and I love my country, um, and I believe that my community, Surya too, has suffered uh, for a long time due to lack of effective representation. And I believe I can provide that effective, transparent, honest representation. And so... Okay, so what are some of the challenges you have noticed in Surya too constituency that you actually want to change or deal with? If where, you are elected. Where do you start from? Uh, start from anywhere. <laughs> the infra there's infrastructural decay mm. in Surya 2. Um, there is lack of social provision in Surya 2. Uh, there's lack of um, um, perspective, lack of compassion for Surya 2. Uh, there's lack of master plan for Surya 2. I could go on forever. But everybody knows Surulere local government in Lagos, for example. It's popular. And I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering, how true is this? Do these things really happen? The Surulere that we've been hearing about? Surulere, when I was growing up, Surulere was a lovely place. Surulere was called the new Ikoi. Um, but over the years, Surulere 2 in particular has been left behind compared to what has transpired in Surulere 1. Uh, in every aspect of Sulu 2, it has been left behind. Mm. Uh, and it's evident for everybody to see. Mm -hmm. We were the same position we were um, many, many years ago. Even worse now. Um, I left Nigeria in 1990. And if Sulu 2 had remained the way it was, at least you could see, stay, okay, it's not too bad. But rather, while Sulu 1 has gone a little bit uh, on the upward trajectory, Sulu 2 has just been abandoned. It's been abandoned by the government, it's been abandoned by its representatives, it's been uh, abandoned by local governments, it's been abandoned by the state government, and it's got no looking by the federal government. Okay, so now you've mentioned your love for Sulu and the things that you have, you know, in mind to do for the people of Sulu okay. Before now, before you ever thought, uh, or nursed the yearning to serve the people. Yeah. What were the things you were doing to bring about change in okay. Surya 2? Uh, one of the things I noticed about Surya 2 is uh, lack of uh, economic development. 
in Syria too. And that has an, I've noticed that a long time ago. So there's lack of economic development, high unemployment. There's also lack of facility, things like health facility. Um, if you look at Syria 1, we have hospital in Syria 1. There's absolutely nothing in Syria 2. Uh, in terms of um, schools, the school provision is very poor in Syria 2. So many years ago, I set up a charity called Syria Urban Regeneration, um, which the acronym, acronym for that is SHOW, and that's where my, my nickname is Shay for SHOW. That's where the word SHOW come, uh, came from. So what I did many years ago was to set up this uh, charity, which lent people money to start business. Mm. So particularly women, because women, um, they say that if you want to make a family succeed, you invest in a woman. And also women have a, a particular difficulty accessing finance. So the charity itself uh, targeted women. So we, we used to we lend people, uh, women, between 20,000 and 50,000 is interest free and collateral free. So that we'll begin to develop our economic, um, develop our economic uh, activity mm -hmm. and uh, that way also address the issue of our unemployment. Okay. Uh, we also have, because of the lack of health facility, we have healthcare, health check for, for uh, everyone that wants to access it. And that we check for high blood pressure, we check for um, blood sugar, we check for diabetes, uh, for glaucoma, cataracts. And this is frequently done? This is frequently done. So we have people on the, on the, te uh, the second cycle now. So every year, they have the medical record. We check it. We'll see how far they've been, they're going, whether they're improving or not. And where we're able to, if we can afford it, we offer some treatment. Okay. Very, very low-key treatment because obviously we, can't, we don't have the resources to do more than that. And the last is, uh, in terms of educational att attainment, because I believe education is the key to everything. Oh, most of our problems can be solved if we have better educational uh, uh, system and better educational attainment for our children. Um, so we have a program whereby we offer after-school club for our children. And it helps them with English and math. So it's after school lessons. Okay. We will so still come way. back on that. Thank but you. I'm going to ask you, why did you choose the Action Democratic Party? Why not another party? Why not another party? <laughs> Why ADP? Um, <laughs> many years ago, uh, before, in 2017, when I thought that, or decided that a political arena would be good for me to contribute, more than what I've been doing in terms of charity, that if I had the political um, phase, it might just expand what I've already been doing. So I looked around the parties around. Um, we looked at APC, um, we looked at PDP. Uh, we didn't, I didn't think that it was, they were the right parties for me. So myself and a group of people sat down and came up with this idea of having a new party, uh, which is detached from the old, uh, which is not dependent on the monies of the old people. Um, so we, we did basically set up uh, ADP from scratch as mm. technocrats, uh, professionals, um, very, very few career politicians. And we made some mistakes along the way, but I think we're, we're uh, particularly in Lagos, I think we're the, be the third biggest party now in Lagos. Mm. Okay. And that's for a party which was formed in 2017. That's a that's a milestone for that's you guys. A, that's a okay, actually, you can goodness. you can join in the conversation, uh, calling the f four lines on your screen right now. You can call in and ask Mr. Uh, Barrister. I love to call him that because mm -hmm. he's actually my elder in the profession. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call him, ask him questions. Those of you from Surulere, this is the time to know your representative. Call in on the show today and ask your questions, make your commendations, and also your comments okay so still um concerning your work in surulere okay. you've mentioned the things you have in place okay. for surulere what you were doing before you okay. even you know nursed the thought of serving now i would ask you this question and i want you to answer me truthfully okay. are you really coming to serve the people or there is personal interest involved in this my personal interest is to serve the people so, um, really? 
That is it. Um, just to serve the people. Just to serve the people. Uh, mm. In terms of, uh, I think um, I have the passion to serve the people. Um, I think I have the calling to serve the people, um, to serve my people. And that is why I'm into politics. Okay, but a lot of people have complained in the past that they have representatives who are not even reachable. They have okay. representatives representing them that don't even dwell or reside in their domain. Okay. You know, they don't stay in local government. Mm -hmm. Imagine a representative, for example, representing Sri Lanka and staying on the island. And okay. then when the people who you are representing are looking for you or they want to call your attention to something going wrong, you know, they can't reach you. Okay. Is this going to be the same? If no, I, I, because I'm, I'm a member of the Labour Party, the mm. UK Labour Party, mm. and you know how politics is played over there. Um, one of the things that people miss out, and some of our representatives miss out, is that there is provision within the Constitution for constituency offers. You're supposed to have an office within the constituency where people can come for consultation, come with their grievances. Many representatives don't have the constituency offers. Um, Many of them are collecting the constituency office allowance, but don't have a constituency office. Um, that we will, we will not do that. Mm -hmm. We'll have a functional constituency office. So if you have any issues, you can come over and talk to. We will also uh, employ people who will be there. So even if I'm not in Lagos, if I'm in Abuja, there'll be people you can talk to who can then talk, call on me. There'll be phones that you can call, you can call on me. And we'll also be accessible via the social media, so you can contact me on Twitter. I mean, All right, coming back to you, Shay. You remember that the phone lines are showing on your screen right now. Mm -hmm. You can call in and contribute in this conversation. Okay, so you've, you've mentioned some of the things, and also there are other grievances. People mm -hmm. say, okay, they have representatives that, you know, they don't get to see until okay. when it's election. And they don't, you know, this is still yeah. on accessibility. Of course, of course, of course. I can understand that. Um, what we are planning to do is to have regular Please television. hold that thought. Thank we you. have a caller from Surulere. Welcome. Hello. 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 Yes, welcome. Uh, yeah. My name is Kola Thompson. So I would like to speak with the uh, uh, barrister Shay Clemens. Okay, yes, you can. Hello. Hello. Can you move away from your TV set, please? Hello. Can you move away from your TV set? Okay, we had to let you go. Sorry. We couldn't really hear you, and then you were too close to your television, of course. But moving on. Um, still on accessibility, that's what I was talking okay. about. People have, this is a major issue. It is, it is. We don't have leaders that are accessible to us. Yeah. Sometimes we don't even want to give, a, you know, report a grievance. Sometimes we want to give an idea yeah. that could yeah. better the constituency. Yeah. How do you plan to make yourself available to the people, especially the youths? Okay. Good. Um, I need, intend to have a cabinet. And if you look at the, uh, statistically, Nigeria is a very young country with the mean age of 17, which means that 50% of Nigerians are over 17 and 50% over 17. If you move that age to 25, you're talking about 67% of Nigerians are under that. So that will be reflected in my cabinet. Half of my cabinet will be made of people who are under 25. I'm also working with some youth group, uh, groups. Okay. We mm -hmm. have Kola from Surulere. Hello, Kola. Yeah, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. I would like to speak with my session. Please speak with him. Okay. Hello, Mr. Shay. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm fine. Can you please move away from your television? Yes. I'm fine. And you? I am well. And you? I'm fine, too. Okay, good. So, where the people of two little buses are so happy. Can you please move away from We can hear you. Yeah, we are so happy you didn't join these two political parties in Nigeria. I'm talking of APC and PDC. Did you go in on uh, ADP shows that you are very sure of yourself and you have something to offer the people of uh, two little 
the poverty alleviation you did and it's for the women was so allowable that some people appreciate. I myself in particular would really appreciate it. So you coming in into the system, we even show the world that people can change the system without joining APC or PDP. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. Thank you very Kola. much for the call. Thank you. All right. And that was actually Mr. Kola from Surulere who called to comment uh, their guest and the political, uh, the, the candidate of the Action Democratic Party uh, who wants to go into the House of Representatives, I beg your pardon, to represent the people of Surulere to constituency. Uh, so, sir, you know, we wish we had more than enough time to talk okay. about it, but... What are your final words concerning, uh, just a few words, why should the people of Surulere to federal constituency vote for you? Um, I'll say that we have tried the alternatives. We've tried APC, we've tried PDP, and they've both failed us. All we have to do is look around Surulere too, and it's evident that they have not effectively represented us. It's about time to make a change. It's about time to choose a credible alternative. And the only credible alternative to Surya 2 is ADP and it's Shea Clement. All right, people. Okay. <laughs> Surya Larry 2, uh, a candidate from the Action Democratic Party, the person of Barista Shea Clement has spoken. And I wish you well in your ambition. Thank you very much. Uh, we hope you win. Thank it will you. be nice to celebrate your victory. Thank you. Uh, to enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.